Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over four worked examples to show you how to do problems involving types of radiation. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says, which row describes alpha, beta, and gamma radiations? And you'll see it's a multiple choice question. So our three choices are helium nucleus, electron from the nucleus, and electromagnetic radiation. Well, remember an alpha particle is the same as a helium nucleus, or made up of two protons and two neutrons. A beta particle is a fast-moving electron, which is the same as an electron from the nucleus. And lastly, gamma rays are high-frequency, high-energy electromagnetic waves. So they must be the electromagnetic radiation. So choosing helium nucleus for alpha, electron from the nucleus for beta, and electromagnetic radiation for gamma, we have the answer B here. Question 2 says a radioactive source emits alpha, beta and gamma radiations. Sheets of aluminium and paper are placed in front of the source as shown. So there's our 10 millimetres of aluminium placed in front of the radioactive source. And then we have the paper here and this point P between the aluminium and the paper. We then have a point Q beyond the paper. And it says which types of radiation from the source are detected at points P and Q? Well, we can say that at point P we're only going to detect gamma radiation since the 10 millimetres of aluminium will absorb both alpha and beta radiation. And that's because, remember, alpha is stopped by a single sheet of paper, whereas alpha and beta would be stopped by the aluminium. And if we're only detecting gamma at point P, then it's only the gamma that can pass through the paper here to get to point Q. So we can say that at point Q we're also only going to detect gamma radiation since gamma rays from point P can pass through the paper. And remember that alpha and beta radiation were stopped by the aluminium at the start, so they're not going to to be able to get through to point Q. Question 3 says a Geiger Muller tube connected to a counter is placed in front of a radioactive source. So there's our source and there's our counter and Geiger Muller tube and it says the number of counts recorded in one minute is 3890. Different shielding materials are now placed in turn between the source and the Geiger Muller tube and the number of counts per minute is recorded. And here's a table showing shielding material and the number of counts per minute. So we can see that when there's no shielding material placed between the source and the Geiger Muller tube, we detect 3,890 counts per minute. When there's a single sheet of paper, however, placed between the source and the tube, we get 2,110 counts per minute. And then when one centimetre of aluminium was placed between the source and the Geiger Muller tube, we get 2,112. And lastly, when five centimetres of lead is placed between the source and the tube, we get 365 counts per minute. And the question asks, which type or types of radiation is the source emitting? Justify your answer. Well, we can say it's alpha and gamma radiation that the source must be emitting, since the number of counts per minute drops significantly when a sheet of paper and five centimetres of lead are placed between the source and the Geiger Muller tube. And in other words, if this is our original count rate, when a single sheet of paper is placed in the way, the count rate drops by quite a bit, from 3,890 to 2,110. So that means the paper must be absorbing some of the radiation in the source, so it must be alpha radiation that's being absorbed by the paper. And then when one centimetre of aluminium is placed in the way, notice how the counts per minute goes up by two, but that's not showing much of a change. The reading is staying pretty much the same. And then when 5 centimetres of lead is placed between the source and the Geiger Muller tube, notice how the count rate goes from 2,112 all the way down to 365. So there must be a lot of radiation getting absorbed there by the lead, and the remainder must be gamma radiation since there wasn't any beta being absorbed. So that means our source must be emitting alpha and gamma radiation. Lastly, question 4 says an experiment is carried out using the apparatus shown to investigate the radiation emitted from different radioactive sources, similar to what we just did in question 3. So we've got a stop clock here with some absorbing material, so we've then got a counter connected to a Geiger Muller tube and a radioactive source. And it says different absorbing materials are placed in turn between the radioactive source and the Geiger Muller tube, and the count rate is determined. This procedure is repeated for each radioactive source. The results are shown in the table. So we have three radioactive sources, X, Y, and Z, and it shows the count rate in counts per minute. And we have readings for no absorbing material, sheet of paper, three millimeters thickness of aluminium, and eight millimeters thickness of lead. It then says one of the sources emits beta radiation only, one emits gamma radiation only, and one emits both alpha and gamma radiation. State which source X, Y, or Z emits both alpha and gamma radiation. Justify your answer. Well, the answer here is source Y, and the reason is it is the only source with a significant reduction in count rate due to paper. So if we start off with source X, you can see its initial count rate is 540 counts per minute, and then when you put a sheet of paper in the way, the count rate stays pretty much the same. It only goes up by 2, so 540 up to 542, which means the paper is not really having an effect on the count rate. And if you look at source Z, you can see it's doing something similar where the count rate is only decreasing by 3, so the reading staying pretty much the same when a sheet of paper is put in the way. And for source Y, starting with a count rate of 823, when you put a sheet of paper in the way, the count rate drops by a large amount to 300. 
150, which means that alpha radiation must be being absorbed from the source. So that means that sources X and Z will not contain alpha, which means it must be Y that's containing alpha and gamma. And we can just check that it also contains gamma here. So for source Y, when you've got aluminium between the source and the detector, the count rate is 354, but then when you swap out the aluminium for the lead, which will absorb gamma radiation, the count rate drops from 354 to 171. Again, quite a big reduction in count rate, which must mean that our gamma ray is being absorbed there by the lead. So to conclude, the answer is source Y. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.